Okay, I'm gonna hit admit. Okay, admit all. Good morning. I already see Lillian and Regina and Lorraine and Joe. I I don't think you're Joe. Uh, and I feel like um, who is the gal from Romper anyway, Room? Do you guys remember stuff. Romper Room? Well, homes yeah. and stuff. And like I feel stuff. like I see and Lisa and CJ. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and have everybody uh, mute you yourselves. You know, a lot of times the people from DC, they go on to. You can go ahead and do that. Okay. That's the only place I know about. That's a beach on the Chesapeake. I'm working on that. Oh, I, I like that. Chesapeake. I'm here in the Chesapeake as a Maryland girly. <laughs> Lisa, Holly. Did my close up cam change it? Hello from Connecticut. Look, Dot is in and ready to go. Oh, yeah, there's an entitlement oh going on now. So I'm thinking, yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to do anything. We're going to do anything. I always go, quite honestly, I was, I was not in that mode. Like, if I wasn't one of my bitchy modes. I'm working on using <laughs> everyone. Um, whatever. I am not going to mute all, Carrie, only because I don't want to mute you well. No, go ahead and mute me. I'll unmute. Okay. I don't, um, I've never been <laughs> one. In my car, I sound like a fucking maniac. I'm not going to lie. I think. All right. Hey, just a reminder that if you come on and you haven't muted yourself, then we may hear your conversation. <laughs> so don't worry, we couldn't tell who it was. But we are so delighted. Carrie, how many people do we have right now? Oh, I'm checking here. Let me see. Let me go back up here. We're and on see. it, Sheila. All right. I got Cheryl from New Hampshire. I've got Coco, it, now, Coco, I don't want to say wrong. No, I always said Norfolk. Norfolk, I think. That's how we go. Who else do I have? Let's do a roll call. Give it to me, even if you already put it in. Tell me where you're from in the chat. Massachusetts, welcome, Barbara. Denver, Colorado. Bethany getting up early. Hawaii, Sexual, Indiana. Oh, my gosh, PA. I'm a PA girl. Oregon, Orlando. I think I saw the villages in there before. Hello, thank you for saying hello. All right, Poconos, love that. Laurel, Maryland, Joe from Hilton Head, love from Loveland. Oh my gosh, this is the most fun. This is so cool. Hey, from North Carolina, Seattle, more Massachusetts, Marie. My middle name is Marie, like every, oh, the Bronx. Uh, like every good person born in the 60s. <laughs> Carrie, what's your, are you a Lynn? I'm a Lynn. Yeah, it's always like Marie or Lynn or something like that. California, I saw, Long Island, Alabama. Oh, I might be going to Birmingham in the spring. I'm very excited about this. Jersey, love some Jersey. Some of my favorite people live in New Jersey. Delaware, love to see it, love to see it. Well, I just wanna say good morning and welcome. So happy to have you here. I am Chris Van Bloom from the Empty Nest Kitchen and I have, I love the love the love. You know that's my favorite part. I have well, my bestie, my compatriot, Sarah. Let's go ahead and mute Sarah. 
Sarah's iPad. I see you there. I think I got her muted. All right. All right. Fantastic. Um, just because you may be having a personal conversation at home that you don't want 200 people to hear. <laughs> Maybe you do. Um, hey, Anna, I thought that was you. I'm so excited. So a couple of people who made my heart full uh, this week messaged me or commented on my Empty Nest Kitchen Facebook page. And I'm always like, you got to give me the hello so I can shout you out because it just Carrie knows I get so goosebumpy. I'm all goosebumpy right now. So we are cooking with Carrie, who is here. She is our AARP Maryland volunteer today. Woo, shout out, you know it, Annabelle. Uh, she is our volunteer, my best bud, my compatriot, my uh, sister from another mister, <laughs> right? And Carrie and I, when I owned my cooking school, Carrie was really my first employee she was we skipped that whole phase pretty darn quick and went straight to being <laughs> best friends so carrie has moderated classes for me for ever since this whole virtual thing started and she's going to help us today we now have 53 minutes to make a fantastic meal and i was thinking i kid you not I was thinking about Bastille Day. I know this is ridiculous, but I was thinking, thank you, Avery. I was, uh, Annabelle, I was thinking Bastille Day. I believe it's July 14th. Carrie, do you know, am I right? You are right. I was actually in Paris on Bastille Day and they have a fantastic, well, they used, I mean, it's been 20 years, but it was fantastic. Well, I had the French food itch so if you all don't know, I do a live demonstration at noon Eastern Standard Time, the Thursday before every class that I do with the AARP. You can go to the AARP Maryland Facebook page and you can see that little demo. It was about 15 minutes. And what I did was I did, do you remember the baked stuffed tomatoes, Carrie? The Provencal stuffed tomatoes? Yes. This is, we are getting to the time of year. Um, it's not a Facebook group. It is my Facebook page and it's Empty Nest Kitchen. You'll see a big old smiling picture of my mug there. <coughs> Excuse me. First thing I'm gonna do, wash my hands. Now listen, Carrie hasn't had to do this for a hot second. Ooh. So did we lose our picture, Carrie? Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening. Huh. I'm sorry about that. Let me. That's okay. We're gonna figure it out. Hang on, everyone. That looks like it's me, huh? Possibly. Hmm. It says it is Zoom recording. Should I stop Brent? Got broadcast? many people here. All right. Oh, Jeanette, you're a sweetheart. Let's do this. Watch what I do here. Switch over to this That's camera. It. Carry. I think we have it. We got it? I think so. All right. Excellent. Aren't we all still learning on this? Great. <laughs> got it. Okay. So we have got. 120 of you in here today. And as I was thinking about Steel Day, I was thinking of going back to my French cooking school roots. Oh, something just happened again. It switched again. Okay. You know what we're gonna do here? There we go. We're gonna forget this one today. All righty. So we are gonna do crepes and <laughs> I fear somehow it's my fault, but what we're going to do is make crepes. Now, if you are cooking with me, I want you to put it in the chat because if you're cooking with me, it, it makes things a little different. I think cooler. We'll see. We'll see. But crepes are one of my favorite meals. And we worked with a chef who always called them crepes. And uh, <laughs> I could never say it. It just made me feel silly, like I was trying to be a wannabe or something. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make our own crepes, crepe batter. 
we're going to stuff them with an herb ricotta filling. And yes, Annabelle, everything will be sent to you, we promise. Um, we're going to make an herb ricotta filling. I love that. But if you're kind of the chocolate hazelnut kind of friend, you can just smear that on instead and skip that filling. And then, because I live in Maryland, we are just coming up to the season where our peaches are gonna be gorgeous and our tomatoes are gonna be gorgeous. So I'm gonna make a really lovely peach and tomato salad. And I know that sounds kind of funny with it all together, but trust me when I tell you, this is gonna be fantastic. If you're ready to go, give me a heck yeah in the comments and we'll get started. And if you want to turn, you do not have to turn, <laughs> tomatoes are a fruit, uh, you don't have to turn your camera on, but if you want to, I'd love to see your face. And if you're like, heck no, I won't go, no problem. I want you to um, keep that chat going. All your questions, all your comments, anything you want to let us know, that's why Carrie's here, because she's going to roll it off as I'm going. All righty. Carrie, can you change it and spotlight me, please? I have you on my big screen too, Barbara. I wish I could show you. Spotlight for I wish everyone, I could correct? Show you. Spotlight for everyone, all me. Oh, there I am. See, now look, I have this wild piece of hair. I can't control it, no matter what I do. All right, keep the questions coming. <laughs> Thanks. All righty. If you have not made crepes before, you are missing out because they are super easy. You need nothing special except a nonstick pan. But the first trick is making the batter. Now, what you can do is chuck everything into a blender and you're good to go. I'm gonna show you how to do it by hand because when I was in culinary school, almost 30 years ago, they told us that we had to learn everything by hand before we could use the machines. That way, if you work in a restaurant and a piece of equipment broke, and Carrie can vouch for this, sometimes at our cooking school this would happen, um, you could still go ahead and do it. So what I've got in my bowl is simply a cup of flour and about a quarter teaspoon of salt. All right. Then, because I'm doing it here, I know um, general all-purpose flour, general AP, that's all it is. So what I'm going to do is I have one and a quarter cups of milk, basic 2%. My husband's a 2% guy. I like whole milk. I'm going to take just a little bit, maybe, oh, maybe half a cup, and I'm going to pop it into the flour. Now, if you're doing it by hand, the reason we do this is because um, liquid makes flour encapsulate. Has anybody ever tried to add flour straight to gravy? Have you ever tried to do that? And then you get little like flour bubbles. It's, it's not good. It's because you can't add liquid straight to flour unless you do it a little bit at a time. So what am I making? Paste for sure. But if you do the milk a little at a time, that makes it so that you're not gonna get that encapsulation, woo, for the bubbles. And crepes are simply um, flour, milk, eggs. If you want to, oh my gosh, look at that. That's so smooth. Carrie, you should appreciate my prowess right now. Look at this, nailed it. And I already made a Dutch baby for breakfast for myself. All righty. By doing it a little at a time, totally helps you out. And Carrie knows we used to uh, make crepe batter and keep it in the fridge overnight. You can totally do that. I'm going to add. I guess you can have eggs. a middle of the night crepe attack and you could take yeah. it out. You don't have to wait for <laughs> breakfast. Okay, when I was pregnant with my youngest, who is now 24, um, crepes, crepes were always my go-to. They were my craving. With my son, it was root beer floats. But with my daughter, it was always crepes. I was making them all the time. And what I like to do, even if we're cooking for one or two people, right? <clears throat> because as we get older, we just don't have to cook those 
meals for a thousand people anymore. I actually think this is great because I don't want to flip 20 crates. I don't. I really don't. <laughs> okay. Now let me grab a measuring spoon real quick. I have one of those warming burners on my stove. And I think I had it for three years, four years before I ever used it. Now I use it to melt my butter because it's just warm enough. Okay. It's, it, it's a real gentle heat. Thank you, Carrie. And I added two tablespoons of butter to this batter. Cast iron, you switch to cast iron. You are strong. The cast iron still gets me sometimes. All right, check this batter out. Oh my gosh, Carrie, this is perfection. All right, let me show so you. Chef, I think um, with the cast iron, they're just heavy, so it would be hard to flip them, right? But there are cast iron- It would iron be hard. Crepe um, pans, they're, they're heavier. You just may have to flip it. They're in a still manageable. Way. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, and I'll show you, when we get to it, I'll show you what I have, but truly anything that's non-stick, will work for you and you don't have to um you don't have to flip it in the air you can use a spatula you can use whatever you like so i but think if I you have iron show... or stainless you could still make crepes you could you would just have to do it oh, sure. without the flip yeah oh sure because cast iron by its nature is going to be um non-stick if right. you have a well-seasoned pan Okay, now what I want you to see here is that this batter is a little thin. Perfect. That's exactly what I want because what we're going to do is set that batter to the side. Now, normally, I would take that batter and pop it in the fridge, but the way we're going this morning, I can leave it out. I have to tell you, I'm so excited. I'm like sweating. I'm so thrilled. I look forward to this all month you guys have no idea all right don't mix those up so we let our batter set because it gives the flour some time to absorb the milk and the pat the batter will thicken a little bit but i'm impatient sometimes i go straight to it i do like it to rest a little bit but sometimes if i just want to eat it i go in for it i just i love crepes so much that's it. How easy is that to make that batter? Give me a yes if you are going to, I go about half an hour. Annabelle, I go about half an hour to let it rest. You'll see, we'll be right on it. Maybe a little early today. But if you think you'd be willing to give this a try, give a crepe a try, give me a yes in the comments so Carrie can tell me. I would love to see it. Now, if you're, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate you. Anybody from the Bronx is solid, not just because we're Yankee fans in this house. Look at all those yeses coming uh, in. I love it. I love it. It's so easy, I promise. And it's really, really fun. You'll see. Um, if you're going to use these uh, for a dessert or for something sweet, you could throw a tablespoon of sugar into your batter. That's the only difference between a sweet crepe. If you wanted, you could even put a touch of vanilla in it. I'm gonna go savory. Thank you. Is it Ilya? I think it's Ilya, maybe Ella. Thank you, Phyllis. Oh, I appreciate you guys so much. All right, while our batter rests, let's make summer in a bowl, yes? Jim, oh, you're so great. Thank you, Tina. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to channel my mother-in-law a little bit. She passed in April. Yeah. How long can the batter stay in the fridge? Overnight. You'll find after overnight, after like one day, it might start to get a little gray. It might separate a little. Now, between you, me, and the light post, I've still used it to make the crepes. But I really try to use it within one day. Here's the other thing you can do. When you make your crepes, you can make them all at one time. Thank you. You can make them all at one time and then store them in the freezer. I have found I'm doing that a lot. So when I head off to work in the morning, I'll pull a crepe out the night before in the fridge. 
it will, we'll figure things out for you, Jan. Um, it will fall and then I just nuke it. That's it. I'll flip them all at one time just to make my life easier. Okay. And when you freeze them, you're going to want to um, stick a little sheet of either wax paper or parchment paper between them because boy, do they just want to stick together once they freeze. My goodness. All right, Chef Carrie, we ready? We're ready, yep. Carrie. Yeah. I, All right, I, there she is. I muted myself. <laughs> oh, no, don't mute yourself. I'd love to hear from you. You know how excited I get. You can keep me calm. So somebody uh, just said that there's, um, the recipe says broth, but I don't see broth in the, um, in here. Just let us know, uh, send Carrie a message. Yeah. You'll see her and let us know. And have you, you know, used, what that is. And we'll get it, we'll get it sorted for you. Have you used gluten-free flour to make these? I'm not sure that it's your thing. I haven't, but I think it would be totally fine. I'll tell you why. We're not necessarily using a lot of the gluten properties to make this a good crepe. I would not substitute like an almond flour or something, huh, um, put milk. <laughs> um, I would not put um, an almond flour. I would go for like a, a cup to cup or a one to one type of flour, okay? Because that is typically a nice mix that you're gonna find that will act as, as close to what a um, a regular flour, a regular all-purpose flour would. All right. I love how many gluten-free options there are. Oh, and I want to let you know, somebody talked about tofu in our last class. So I have been doing tofu research. That will shock Carrie. She knows who I am. Yeah. Thanks, Carrie. All right. So I am going to make our dressing for our salad right in the bowl. My mother-in-law uh, taught me that. She would always make this incredible apple cider vinegar dressing. It was the simplest thing. I mean, and I remember before I went to cooking school, I would watch her and she would just whip it out, right? She would just whip that out. Made me so impressed. So, so impressed. All right. So I have taken, Lisa, if you want to make your crepes vegan, why don't you try um, soy milk with it? Maybe soy or almond. I think you might have success with either of those. I really do. All right. So I have taken my shallot and I love shallots because they're my favorite onion. And we're going to do a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And if there is a, a problem with your recipe, we'll go ahead and send fresh ones out to you. No worries. No worries. All righty. And where did I sneak my Dijon? Thank you very much. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. Dijon is an emulsifier, right? That means it is going to take things that don't want to hang out and help them hang out together. So I always use Dijon in all of my vinaigrettes. And I'm gonna use about three tablespoons of balsamic here. I think this one has the mother in it. Oh, that's cool. Do you guys know the mother and vinegar? That is kind of how the vinegar is made. It's a neat thing. And I am just gonna take this and give it a little whisk together. You can see what's happening here. I love to do this. Do you do your salads this way now, Carrie? I do sometimes. It depends. Sometimes I just um, make the dressing on the side. And then when it's time to dress, put half in the bowl and then use yeah. the rest. Yeah. Well, now that I'm washing my own dishes, I am. Carrie will laugh because she has washed many dishes for me. All righty, let's say. Mm. Oh, that's good. Oh, yum. I might even want a touch more vinegar in that. 
I think I'll be all right. All right. So I've got my salad dressing in my bowl. And this is where we get exciting. Okay. We are going to take, oh, I forgot my little bit of honey. I was like, it needs a little touch of sweetness. Now, do y'all know that honey is the one ingredient that won't go bad on you? Honey will crystallize and all you have to do is heat it and it yeah. will, yeah. Could you elaborate a little bit on the vinegar mother, what it is? There was a question about that. Okay, so if you go to the grocery store, look at your vinegars and you will see some of them say, comes with mother. And if you look in the bottom, you'll see this kind of fogginess and maybe some tendrils coming up. The mother is what makes vinegar vinegar. It's kind of what turns things to vinegar. So if you had a bottle of red wine and you had used um, a vinegar that had the mother in it, you can save the mother at the end and put your red wine in and after some time, it'll turn to vinegar. It's a really cool thing. I had a neighbor who turned me on to that. I remember she was like, oh, I have the mother. Would you like so?" I was like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I looked it up. <laughs> Figured it out, moved on. Does that help? Sometimes I think it looks like a worm. <laughs> it sounds funny, but it's like a little but thing I that sticks up. I... Okay, okay. I'm coming in hot. You ready? I'm coming in hot. I have a white wine vinegar here. And if you look at the bottom, can you see that? And can you see how it's a little cloudy? It's not a crystal clear vinegar. Right, see that? That stuff with the mother. There you go. I always think of it like an alien or a sea creature or something. Yeah. Right? Look at us learning things we didn't even know we were gonna learn today. I love it. All right, now, I like to take my greens pop those in. And I just put everything on top of the salad. I don't toss it with the vinaigrette until I'm ready to eat it. That way the whole thing doesn't wilt. Now this is that timeless trick Carrie taught me where we're going to take our tomatoes. And I always like until mine come in, I always like a really colorful assortment. We stick it between two plates and then they're all halved. Isn't that great? Carrie, you still do that, right? I do. I do it for grapes too. It's good when you're making like a, you know, chicken salad with grapes and, <clears throat> or if you yeah, just have little ones you. and you don't want to give them a whole grape. It's yes. faster than cutting yes, them one at a time. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, thank you, Joe. I appreciate you. Joe, I love that you're commenting. Thank you. All right. So I threw those in there. Now I'm gonna toast a couple of walnuts, but I'll be totally honest with you. My husband gets, he's not allergic, but he gets a little bit of reaction to them. So I will serve them separately on the side. All right, and I have gorgeous peaches. Now I think mine came up from South Carolina. I think we have some folks from South Carolina on this call too. I love that. But all I'm doing, I'm not going to uh, peel them. Yeah. Oh, Joe, is that you? I love it. I'm not going to peel them. But if you wanted to, you could. Oh, my gosh. The last thing I want to eat in my life is a ripe, fresh peach. It totally is. When you smell that, I, just I, it's... I sniffed too, <laughs> hoping to smell it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? All right, I'm gonna take those. Oh my gosh, well, you guys are gonna, I'm gonna blow your minds when you see this. I hope that you'll try this. I just get so tired of like the basic green salads, you know, and I feel like I was talking to somebody the other day and I said, your whole job with summer cooking is just don't ruin what you've got because the food is so good. The produce is so amazing. I came in because I'm an, um, an adult now. I came in last night 
my husband had half a watermelon sitting out on the counter. He was having his poker guys over and he made them, he did watermelon. Isn't that cute? And uh, I took a spoon and I went right into the middle of the watermelon. My mom used to always call that the mignon or the watermelon. That was the best, right? That very center. Yep. And he came out this morning and was like, what happened to the watermelon? I'm like, sorry, I love you. <laughs> All right. I am going to take some fresh basil out of my garden because is it summer in Maryland, summer in the U.S., if you are not using gorgeous, fresh basil? And I don't chop the basil. I slice the basil. These are all little leaves because I just pulled them out of my garden. I pulled them out, little leaves. If you go back and forth over basil, like super aggressively, it's not gonna work for you because it's gonna turn all of it black. Now look but at this, I'm coming in hot, Carrie. Okay, wait, we're not ready because we're gonna gild the lily. Are you ready? This is my favorite part. I have a ball of burrata cheese. Now, does everybody know what burrata cheese is? You use scissors. Oh, Barbara, that's so clever. You know what? I'm like a toddler, Barbara. I am. I just go in with my hands. <laughs> burrata is the best. So burrata is basically a mozzarella that's filled with a soft curd. Okay, it's, and we're just it's easier to it. find now. It used to be a little hard to oh find. Oh my gosh! But I'm finding it yeah. more and more just regular grocery stores. Look, look at this now. If you're saying, Chef Chris, I don't want to have that much fat. It's a salad. Come on, don't take it out. You saw how pretty it was without that, right? And get into it. Have some <laughs> fun with your food. My goodness, I'm killing me. <laughs> you're killing me. I love it. All Me right, too. I'm trying to this. smell it. Carrie, I can bring some over to you. Carrie lives about <laughs> 10 minutes from me. Look how gorgeous that is. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, you once we toss that, it's going to get a little, thank you, Denise. It's going to get a little of that vinaigrette on those peaches, which will help stop them from turning brown. So the peaches are the last thing you want to add to that. All right. Come on. <laughs> we're cooking with gas here and I only used one peach because they're just two of us Steph we have another question about the uh, mother love it uh it's two okay parts. one how long before the wine added to the mother is it ready to use and two I don't know mother... I'd have to look it up okay can the mother be reused over and over also divided I feel like the mother can be used but again, I'd want to look it up. I don't want to give you wrong information. I don't know that it's like a sourdough starter for sure. So we'd have to do some research on that one. I don't want to steer you wrong. Let's say this. I have whetted your motherly appetite there. <laughs> and I've still got my walnuts toasting. Totally forgot because I got so excited by Joe being in South Carolina. All right. How are we feeling everyone? We doing okay? And just so you know, our next class is gonna be in August. It's gonna be in the middle of August. Um, I believe you can still use this link if you wanna come in, but if you want the recipes and everything, you're going to want to register in advance. We would love to have you. And we're doing classes all the way through the end of the year. I'm so excited. All righty, Chef Carrie, are we ready to make some filling? I think so. I mean, that salad went so quickly. It's so fast, right? And I like to make my own vinaigrette. I'm not sure yet, Dot. I'm not sure. I'm having, all right, I'll tell you. I'm having a little surgery done on Monday and I can only eat soft foods. So I'm like, maybe we'll have some soft foods. Ooh, goat cheese. Goat cheese would be so good with the peaches, I think, but I love goat cheese. Now, Chef Carrie, she hates goat cheese. So she would say to you, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> All right. The burrata is I'm a delicious make... idea. The burrata is a delicious idea. All right. So I'll tell you that um, 
I, I think I'm my grandma deep down. One of my favorite things to do is to have a little herb garden outside. And I am not a green thumb by any stretch. <laughs> I know not everybody likes the goat cheese. I am not um, a green thumb, but I have found the herbs that work best for me growing wise. I love chives because chives are perennial, I believe, and they, oh, body, they just keep coming back and coming back. I finally had my plant go last year. I think I had it for 10 years. So we just planted three new ones this year. And I feel my chefiest when, first of all, I wear an apron. Let's make aprons cool again because I love them. But I love to put on an apron on a Saturday morning and then paddle out to the garden in garlic chives. Oh, yes. Um, paddle out to the garden in my bare feet with my scissors and snip some fresh herbs and then come in and make something. I don't do it nearly enough. I can practically hear my husband snickering at me from the next room because he's like, I wish. But I love it because I'll tell you what, some chives in your eggs, little chive, maybe a little cream cheese for all my goat cheese haters. It's going to be fantastic. All right, I'm going to take you some can do of ricotta in your eggs instead. Yes, if you don't have ricotta. See, I always think that I have way more um, cream cheese around than ricotta. But Carrie knows I make my own ricotta sometimes, not all the time, not today. It's really easy to make. If you guys want, we can do a class. I can show you how to do that next month. It's so easy to make your own ricotta. It's embarrassing. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of dill. I'm not going to go too hard on the dill. Carrie, remind me of that. Okay. All right, because you know I'll forget. All right, so a little bit of dill with the chives. I sliced them. With the dill, I can go in and really give it a chop chop. Okay. And a dill stem is also pretty tender. So I'm okay popping that in there too. But then we come to the thyme. Now, check this out. This is our thyme. Oh my gosh, isn't it pretty? I just snipped it out. And I'll tell you this, thyme is another one that hangs on. Thyme totally hangs on year to year. Eventually it'll give up. But what you wanna do is you wanna hold it at the top and then strip it down to remove the leaves, okay? And it can be a little tedious, it can. So I usually get a little lazy at some point with my time. <laughs> but I just put in as much as I'm feeling like that day. I feel like with the, Here, with like rosemary, the, the older it gets, it gets the thicker stems and you can use yeah, those, but, yeah, you, but you can use those, but you can't really do that with thyme, but you could with the rosemary. Time isn't, it's just enough to be annoying, but tell them what we do like with the rosemary. Tell them what so, we do with the rosemary. So when you have stuff. the big thick ones, you can use those as skewers for- Yes, yeah. you wanna soak them in water. Mm -hmm. You wanna strip the leaves off. Now, Lisa likes um, an herb stripper. That's what I call these, Lisa. <laughs> woo -hoo, woo -hoo. <laughs> but you can leave a little on so, the end of the rosemary if you're using it as a skewer to make it fancy. So it looks a little like a crown, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. Well, that is enough time for me right now. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm over it. And then once you get that time in there, you can have at it with the chopping. That's totally cool. Now I mentioned this in my demo on Thursday, but way back in the day when I was in cooking school, we had a little free time. We were getting toward the end of the whole program. And we had an incredible ice cream machine, you know, all that stuff you get in cooking school. And there was a guy in my class, Jose, and we all just knew Jose had it, right? Jose was the guy. He had it. He knew what was what. He was the best cook in the whole class. He was a natural. And he said to us one day, let's make thyme ice cream. Well, this was the mid 90s. This was not what we did. This was not like the thing yet. Now you would find it. We took a big bunch of thyme, tied it together and heated it in milk. And what happens when you do that is you're infusing the flavor from whatever you've got 
into the milk. So using this big bunch of time and using the whole stick, right, the whole stem of it really helped load that milk with the flavor. Then we made the ice cream out of it. And I have to tell you, it is probably, it was the most sublime thing that I have had. It was just absolutely incredible. So good. We loved Jose. I've made it so many times since. It tastes like summer. All right. So now we've got our herbs and our ricotta. And I'm going to put a little of my fancy salt. I have a salt. Let's see if I can come over and show you again. I have a salt that is really big. Do you see how fat that is? Can you see? This is so cool. Can you see? That is a piece of salt. This is called a flake salt. And you'll find it, um, typically I find it in the English section of the garden, uh, of the grocery store. Ooh, time shortbread. <gasps> but it is good stuff. And I keep it around. I bought some pre-pandemic and then the pandemic hit and then uh, I didn't need quite as much. <laughs> A little bit of pepper. I think I already put some in. We'll put in a little more. And then just a little touch, not much, olive oil. Okay. Now the olive oil won't get cooked. So it's good to use a really good quality olive oil here. All right. And it's ricotta. It's not going to hurt you if you want to taste it and see if it's good. We don't have any raw egg in there. We don't have anything you're not supposed to eat. Mm. All right, that is really good. Oh, holy cow, Carrie. You coming over for lunch? <laughs> All right, now I, was thinking, I will tell you this. I just was thinking Go about the, the lemon ricotta that we like so much. And then Harry I was thinking of I, the lemon thyme ricotta. Could we make it a lemon thyme? Yes. Yes. Harry and I go to the beach here in Maryland, Ocean City, Maryland, a couple of times a year. We love it. Yeah, switch up the herbs. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. Whatever you like. But we go and there's a restaurant that does a big ball of ricotta with lemon. Does it have honey, Carrie? Yeah, there's honey drizzle and, um, you know, apple and the toasted and all the yummy things. Now I'm hungry for that. Thanks. It has Gary. like a little crumble on top too, that I think is, to me, it reminds me of like a lemon snap cookie that's been crumbled over top. It has a little bit oh, of texture. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. All right. Now I am going to take, I don't know if y'all noticed, but I saved a little bit of my chive for garnish. We love a garnish. And what am I looking for? What am I looking for? Oh, a plate. That is how close we are here. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. Since my close-up cam was causing us all sorts of issues, I'm going to bring you with me so you can see what we're doing over here. Hang on a second because I'm going to grab the camera and bring it over. But I want to show you that I actually have a crepe pan. Unnecessary. But when I own the cooking school, I we will. Loretta, if you message Carrie directly, she'll give you the name of that restaurant. It's our favorite. We go all the time. Um, the crepe pan is non-stick. That is the most important thing that we're doing here. So if you're deciding to go with stainless steel, it's gonna be super important that you are using plenty of butter on your pan, okay? And Carrie, what do I always say about the first crepe? Um, you, could, you should just throw it on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not what ends, I say. That's not what she says, but sometimes the first one ends up on the floor. Uh, but the first I one I always is, say the first one's for the dog. Yes. First one's for the dog, Carrie's yes. freelancing or freestyling on me. Uh, because it, I always have a problem with the first one, okay? Um, no matter what I do. Sometimes I nail it and I get very excited. But we wanna make sure that our heat is pretty warm. Not on high heat, 
So I'm on a medium high heat. Now you can see I can hold my hand above that pan, no problem. It's it's definitely warm, but it's not so uncomfortable. I have to yank my hand away. I like to make sure it's nice and warm. Now I want you. I really want you to try this. Okay, I got all those yeses before. It is so much fun to do this, and the sense of accomplishment that you feel when you nail it is pretty terrific. All right. So don't be afraid. It's just food. Who cares? Right. I did the math with uh, someone yesterday. And I'm like, you're going to eat 107,000 meals in your life. So what if you mess a couple up? All righty. Come over to the stove with me. Come on. Let's see if we can make this work. Ooh. All right. Now we're just going to put it down for right now so we can see. Come down and come back a little. All right, so I've got my pan here and I've got my melted butter. We love our melted butter. I just have it on the back of the stove here. And it is important that we oof, that we brush, even with a nonstick pan, oh yeah, baby, that we brush this. Okay. Now I'm getting a little snap pat, uh, crack a pop on my hand there. I'll take my batter. Now my batter, it's still a great consistency, but it has thickened up a little bit. I think that's about the right amount. Surface tension, if you pull it up, you're gonna see it's really drippy. If you touch it to the surface, you create surface tension and it will drip a lot less for you. All righty. You can also give it that. I'm going to take the pan. I'm going to pour my crepe batter in the middle and I'm going to start swirling it around. Now I can tell I'm a little hot. I'll drop it a little. A couple of holes, we'll put that there. And I can tell it's a little hot because I'm getting holes. Can it's also see like those pancake. Holes? The first yeah. one, you have to kind of figure out your pan temperature. That's what this one is a good tester. Are you are you saying that because you know I make terrible pancakes? Um, I make I might the worst make terrible pancakes. pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, are we ready? Now let's see if we can get this going. All right, so I've got some little holes here. That's okay. In school, they used to tell us we didn't want any color on it at all. I think that's baloney. I like it a little tan. I like it to have a little color. But I start shaking it. Oh, did you see that? Did you see what happened there? Okay, you ready? Let's see if we can, boom. Perfect. Look at that. Come on, come on. We are crushing the grapes. All righty, now I'm bringing you back. Sorry for making you dizzy. The chef. I know Woo! that flipping the crepe is a really fun part of it. It but is. Do you have to flip it that way if you're a little intimidated by it? Of course not. <laughs> because we are all about kitchen empowerment, right? We are not about making you feel less than. It's just a crepe. And I have flipped probably thousands of crepes in my life. Okay, but let me show you a different way. I would hate some for someone okay. not to make a crepe if they were worried about not being able to do the flip. Oh my gosh. Yes, who cares? But I will say this, and this is not to diminish anyone's feelings. I have had eight-year-olds flip crepes. Have they landed on my feet? Sure, on occasion. Have they uh, landed on the floor? Absolutely. But when they nailed it, did they feel right? They totally did. So I say give it a go, but I have, you don't even need this size, right? Thank you, Kim. You don't need it. This is just one that I pulled out. If you want a little soft spatula, Steph, when can it's you ready move that to go over to the side just a little bit? We yeah, can't see yeah, here. Yeah. Thank you. How's that? Perfect. Can, we got it. Yep. We good? good. Yep. All right. So if you want, just take a little spatula. Just take a little spatula, check it out. Boom. Easy breezy. 
right? Easy breezy, lemon squeezy. That's all it is. And then I'm gonna roll it like an egg roll, okay? You roll it however you like. But I kind of like a little bit of the filling here. And you can stick these in the oven if you wanna really warm up that ricotta filling because right now it's just the heat from the crepe. I fold in the sides. I take it like that, give it a little tuck, give a little smush, shazam. Look at that, Chef Carrie. come on. Look at us. How easy is that? Now, if you are following my Facebook page and you flip a crepe, I would love to know. I would love it if you would comment or leave me a message or something so I can tell you how incredible you are because it's really just a crepe. It really is. It doesn't matter. With all the stuff going on in the world, what do we care about a crepe? Oh, this is so good. I do try to get them about the same size. I'm not always perfect at it, but check it out. Now I'm going to turn that off and come back to it after the class. But then I can, if I want, I don't really need to do too much, but I can lightly brush it with a little bit of butter. And then I'm gonna take my little chives. Oh, come on. Look at this, the cutest. Always garnish it, always, always garnish it because that's what we love. We love a garnish. And then gorgeous salad. And truthfully, I'd be a single crepe girl on this one, but I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna give it a little toss now to get it all covered. Holy guacamole, Carrie. You better get your buns over here. <laughs> all right, look at this, look at this. Stop it. Okay. I'm gonna have to give my husband a good lunch today to recover from that devastating Yankees loss last night. Man, all righty. So there we go. Now you tell me, that that's not a beautiful little plate. Look at that. And I was talking at you the whole time. <laughs> right? I spoke to you the whole time and we still have five minutes to go. Simple, simple food in the summer. You are capable. Thank you, Kara. You are capable. You are competent. You are awesome. So just try it. It doesn't matter. If you don't want to make your own salad dressing, don't. Buy a great dressing that you love and use that one. Who cares? Think about all those fresh things that we put in there. And I will tell you, thank you, Chris. I appreciate you. I will tell you that fresh basil in there really amplifies the flavor here because everything's good, but that gives it, thank you, Joe. That gives it that fresh bite. All righty. So if you need, we'll make sure that we get new recipes sent out to you. Carrie, what was that last comment? Thank you, Deborah. You're amazing. I appreciate you. Uh, I was thanks for the crepe hints. Uh, I love your presentations. <laughs> oh, thank you, CJ. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Isn't Carrie great? Give Carrie this. <laughs> thank um, you, thank an you. induction soap? I don't think so, but I will tell you this on an induction soap, every time you take the pan off, you're going to lose contact with the heat, like the heat will shut off. So you may have to get a groove going on. Jan, I hope you do. Like get your get your groove, or maybe you just use a spatula to flip them. So Mahalo, thanks, Natalie. And I think Carrie crushed it. I think Carrie crushed it today. <laughs> so thanks, Tina. Enjoy Maryland. I hope you'll come by Frederick where Carrie and I live. It is the greatest. Yes, we will get that out for sure. Thanks, Carrie. All right, Carrie, if you want to stop the recording now, and if anybody has 